So I think we both agree that we want an end to terrorism. Okay, um, Islamic jihadist terrorism certainly is very high on the list because they certainly <laughs> do have a lot of crazy ideas floating around. Um, you know, for a terrorist, you need someone who's got some violent tendencies to begin with for whatever reasons, perhaps their upbringing or, or any, any number of things. Plus, you've got to have the right set of ideas or memes that uh, gives expression to that violence. And I think there's there's a lot of that to go around. I think Islamic fundamentalism certainly allows the expression of that kind of violence. Um, I think uh, the right wing has been fermenting a lot of that violence when they start talking about abortion doctors being baby murderers. I think that's a case where they're intentionally putting out that idea or that meme <coughs> that, um, that these doctors are violent and they deserve violence in return, you know, eye for an eye and that sort of thing. It's, it becomes more just if you can frame the, the, uh, the opposition as engaging in that kind of behavior, all right? which is it's untrue. So a lot of the legitimacy of the terrorists comes from the fact that uh, if we start throwing a lot of our might and power behind it and we start involving lots of otherwise innocent citizens in our pursuit of terrorists, uh, what happens is, is that we begin to legitimize their viewpoint and more and more people are willing to accept their explanation for the world as it is, okay, and we legitimize their perspective. They they are of the opinion that the West is corrupt and heavy-handed and doesn't care about other countries or the people in other countries. And when we go in heavy-handed like we did into Iraq, well, that does nothing but legitimize their whole series of complaints about the U.S., all right, and and it makes it harder for us because for every terrorist we kill, we're they're recruiting, you know, five, ten more. All right, and that is that is the problem. And all the intelligence estimates have said exactly that. That <clears throat> what we've done, especially in Iraq, is in pursuing Al Qaeda, is we have swelled their ranks with new recruits. All right, so so using the military to go after terrorism simply does not work in my opinion it doesn't work I think it has to be uh, it has to be engaged along a different set of front lines I think the premier thing we have to do is is to figure out how we're going to delegitimize it and understand how their mind works it requires a certain amount of empathy now notice I use the word empathy a lot of conservatives confuse empathy with sympathy I don't sympathize with terrorists. I don't sympathize with criminals, but I can empathize with them, which means I try to put myself in their position and understand their viewpoint. It doesn't mean I agree with them. It means I understand. I can put myself within their shoes and understand how possibly they could have arrived at some conclusions. All right. It's a very important ability to have. Uh, in fact, it was Robert McNamara who said that Empathy in the JFK White House probably averted nuclear holocaust during the Cuban Missile Crisis. All right. So empathy is something that's good. Sympathy, you know, you don't want to sympathize with, with terrorists, certainly not. And they certainly don't have my sympathies. I, I would like to see them, if not uh, outright killed, they're certainly brought before justice. Um, so how do we combat terrorism? Well, I think delegitimizing them so that we gain more allies. If we have more people who are against them, they are more willing to help us in our pursuit of them. And we need a lot of help because they just blend in. They blend in in their native countries. We can't go in as foreigners and root them out because they look like everyone else. <laughs> we need help from the locals in order for them to help us identify them and and take them out, okay? That's what we need. And we do that not by coming in and bombing everything in sight, but we do that by, by putting our expressions out there, by uh, letting them know that that terrorism is a threat to everyone, okay? 
um, and that you know the West isn't what it's portrayed to be. All right, and we have to <laughs> because you know that's easier said than done. But but I don't believe the military has worked at all. We have to pursue other avenues, something that uses more precision, that's more surgically oriented, something that doesn't go in carpet bomb. You know, they say it's surgical precision. Well, you know, mistakes are made, and they, they bomb wedding parties, they bomb funerals, and, you know, they call it collateral damage. But, you know, the families of the people who get killed do not so easily forget that they just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time and that we rot all this violence upon their lives, okay? They're trying to live, and we and we bond them out of existence, okay? Because because they happen to be in the wrong place, all right? Um, so I think, I think we share our desire to get rid of uh, religious extremism, terrorism, all that stuff, I think we disagree about the best way of going about it. Um, and I do not believe that the military is equipped to, to handle terrorism. It's the military is equipped to handle, you know, winning the world war, you know, World War II <laughs> with jets and everything else. And, you know, we're, we're just not equipped to handle this new war with the military. We have to be smarter about this use less brute force, okay? Because brute force is not working. We have to engage more intelligently. So that's all for now.